Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. We've got quite a show today for for folks. But the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to acknowledge these guys that are sitting here uh, with me. They're all vets. Both of them are vets. And I, we got to make sure, I want to make sure that they know that we're saying thanks for serving, guys. Okay. You see Don DePay? You, you've seen Don DePay before. He's been, he's been in the, he was in the Navy, if you will. Yes. And then my dear friend John, John Sweeney, you've seen him too a number of times in the past. And he, he was a National Guard. He was captain of the National Guard. He, yep. He's since retired from the city, yep. city of Portland. And, uh, and now he's actively campaigning. He's running for office. And he, we're out here actively doing it. Right, guys? Okay, good. But anyway, I would I would still say I want to acknowledge the the vets that are out there. Again, as one would say, uh, I will be doing we'll be doing a sh- a show, if you will, once a month, talking about reaching out to vets, making sure that they understand what their bennies are, and also educating the public about the definition of veterans. I think it's very very important. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I want to make sure that I said that right up front. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is that uh, we've got two segments of the show. We're going to the first 15 minutes. We're going to spend some time. At least just one part of part of the at least part one part of what we're going to be talking about this issue about the whole issue of what happened in Vegas in Las okay. Vegas. I mean everybody's just they just still don't know what's going on. I mean the whole news is just still doing the piece on this deal. Imagine uh, 47 weapons, uh, firearms, if you will, and 59 died and 500 injured in Las Vegas. I mean there's so much stuff going on and it's it's constantly bombarding you. You know it's it's, it's like a, a a culture in itself. Yeah. People are talking about this issue. Well, I, what I thought I'd do is that uh, I'd uh, spend a few mi- few minutes with uh, Don, both Don and John. Uh, John and Don, as you know, was a former Portland policeman, and uh, and that he's, he was ve- very familiar with with uh, with firearms. And John, for that matter, had been he'd been basically heavily involved with firearms besides being in the military, where he basically learned some aspect of it. But since then, he's joined organizations and whatever. He's, he's used it as a sports aspect of it and, and the whole nine yards. So they're both knowledgeable as, as, it, as it relates to firearms. So, guys, let's start off by saying right off the front, what, what do you think, Don, about this issue? About I think this the is bulk a terrible of tragedy that really has nothing to do with gun control. That's, okay. my, big, that's my, big situa- my big deal with this particular incident is you can, every law that was there to be broken, mm-hmm. be broke from trespassing, as far as I'm concerned, to murder. Uh, no amount of gun control will have stopped this person simply because rich people have always been able to get what they want. I don't care if I, ordinary citizen can't buy a machine gun. If I got the money, I can buy a machine gun. Mm-hmm. I can buy drugs. I can buy girls. So with that amount of money, you can't talk about gun control. Mm-hmm. Now, why he did it, that's a different story. But gun control has nothing to do with this issue. Mm-hmm. What do you think? So there. Okay. It was a tragedy, and the, uh, <clears throat> the thing is that they talked about all of the, the luggage that he had hauled in. Right. Well, he showed up with his vehicle. The, the porters, you know, loaded it up, took it up to his room, and they had to he, he kept them out. No, the deal is because if they put it on a the cart, they're not sure uh, what the uh, what was the contents were, and the thing is that you know a lot of people with a lot of money travel with a lot of stuff. Sure. And the thing is, <clears throat> so he got up there. The thing is, Mandalay Bay is a gun-free zone. And they were panning a, the camera around. I saw the sign that says no weapons. So the thing is, this is where a lot of these things happen. It is in uh, gun-free zones. Mm-hmm. Now, gun control is not about guns. It's about control. Now, not having a firearms leaves you in, in a weakened state. But if you look around here, look what they're doing. They're doing away with parking spaces. They're building apartments without parking so that it'd be real inconvenient to have a car. So it'd be real in, um, you don't have a car which will uh, affect your life and especially your children's life because not having a car makes a difference on what kind of jobs you can take or get, see, because, and a lot of poor people, they work at places and times not served by public transportation. So uh, it's about control, and what they want to do is control you. And yeah, the, the thing is, 
uh, we started in 1776 under the Articles of Confederation, which is a parliamentary system, a legislative system. And you see in these European countries, they get a feather in the wrong place, they pass, pass a law, no, no protections. Our Constitution is the only Constitution that gives you and I and our viewers out there protections. And they had the uh, Constitutional Convention in 18, 1787, and they want to have another one, we better not have one. And, they, and it was to tweak the Articles of Confederation. It was a runaway, and they changed, and we got what we got now, uh, including the Bill of Rights. And <coughs> the uh, pre uh, George Washington be became president in April of 1789. And in 1788, there was a group starting to fight that because, you know, when you we all went in and we stuck our hand up, protect the Constitution okay. against all do, enemies. Do, do, do me a favor. Do me a favor. We're going to spend more time on that part of it. Okay. I want to. I just want to go back and, okay. and talk about the, the type of firearms that this gentleman had. Okay. They were will, all and this other deal yeah. about this this, this yeah. so-called stock deal, that kind of stuff. Okay. They're because all all purchased let me, legal. Let me, let me make my point. The point is that we're going to have another discussion. Hopefully, going to get Jen, Jen, uh, uh, was it Burbeck? What's her name? What's her name? Jenny her name? Burdick. Jenny Burbeck, and she's a senator. She's a senator, and she's been very much on the, the anti-gun kind of lobby aspect of it. And hopefully we're going to get the NRA to be down there, here, and we're just going to talk about guns, right? You got me? Point blank. Okay. See what happens. The gun control. Okay, good. So get back get back on these firearms, the kind of firearms. They're all legal. That That's got. what you're saying. You got them. They're all legal, and these, <coughs> these attachments that they had uh, called the uh, the bump stock. The bump stock. What does that? What is that? Well, you you take the regular stock off an AR-15 mm -hmm. and you put this one on, and what it is is it, when you get ready to shoot it, you push it forward and then you get the recoil working on the thing. Mm -hmm. See, and and the bump. So you don't have to worry about the, the finger deal. No, right? you're just you're just holding that thing and you're just letting the thing recoil. If you're real strong and stiffen up, it's not going to work. Now they have other devices, the Hellfire and some other things, that attach to the. Uh, Trigger, trigger guard, you, you pull it, you know, mm -hmm. it will fire in a burst mode, three mm -hmm. to five shots, depending on the particular model. So, and they're, they were all approved by the BHFE, -E, you know, and usually uh, it was their job, you know, not to allow some of these things to go. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, if you want to buy a, a, a pre-1986 firearm, you can find find one and you go through a class three dealer and, and wait about six weeks and you've got a a but real you know, fun the, gun. the interesting politics about that piece is that they were saying, talking about the fact they were going to ban this, and the NRA said that okay about this piece aspect of it. But you ask yourself the question: Well, how many are out there already? Well, <laughs> if anything, they're going to be more valuable now yeah. than they were. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, so how, how do we deal with that, Don? Well, number one, military weapons like machine guns shouldn't be available to citizens, and they're not. But then we go back to how do you keep the rich man from getting what he wants? You mm -hmm. can't. So I know it's one of those problems that can't mm -hmm. be solved, Bruce. Yes, Some yes. problems can't be solved, and that's one of them. Gun control, 200 years, mm -hmm. it's not getting any better. Mm -hmm. It's just more people got guns, and they're using them, and rich people get what they want. Mm -hmm. Whether it's an abortion, or whether it's some heroin, or whether it's a nice fancy bump you stock. Get, you get what you want. I'm going to get it. You and you can take your law and... And, you know, when you start thinking about it, too, the baby boomers, you know, senior citizens, I mean, folks who are older or whatever, the whole idea, because, because of the major crime epidemic that we're sitting in, whatever, there's a lot of fear going around. A lot, sure. of, a lot of folks are kind of concerned, you know what I mean? Sure. I'm, I'm retired out of my home, I'm retired, I'm sitting up at my home, and, yep. and people are knocking, you, you see all kinds of horrific things on the tube. This mm -hmm. thing down there had a line around the block. Yep. For blood, giving blood. Yep. And across the town, another running around the block of the gun store. Yep. We're going to buy guns and we're yep. going to give blood. Wow. 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 What do you, what do you, so what, what can we do? Do, uh, do we educate people more? Or, uh, uh, huh? No. No. I don't know what you, I don't think there's any solution. So there's no solution to the problem of rich people getting what they want. Yep. Wow. I, I think the deal is that. That, uh, There's no solution. We need There's to, no solution. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. Yeah. we need to talk with each other, you know, because a lot of times saying, like a lot of parents say, I'm going to talk to my kid. Or my kid, the kids are saying, I'm going to talk to my parents, rather than saying, I'm going to talk with them to make it a two-way thing. So you think about putting it in the schools or something like that? Well, yes, and the, and the fact that they had the Eddie the Eagle program and a lot of the schools are fighting it. So that here's a good <coughs> program that says, 
you're going to, um, uh, if a young person finds a firearm, the deal is uh, leave it alone, leave the room, and tell an adult so that that could be be found. So, but it's 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 just the fact that uh, the, the the gun control stuff is just not going to work. And in fact, they don't want it to work. The um, <laughs> no, don't no joke. Okay. They talk about yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, the one gun a, a <coughs> month, or the one gun a year that you talk about. There is a a form called the multiple purchase form. You go in and you buy two, three guns, and the deal is it goes on a form. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry yeah, about that. Yeah, anyway, so what happens is when Sammy and Susie, uh, no good Nick, they, they can't get a gun, so they get a friend to go out and, and they get two, three guns, and then they commit the crime, and the authorities find that a gun there. The first thing to do is they check the multiple purchase list. Okay. And then they come in to their friend and says, you know, there was a murder at the 7-Eleven and <laughs> you're on the list and uh, you must be the one. <laughs> no! Uh, Sammy and Susie, no good Nick. I got it for them. And, and all of them admit that's the one gun control law that does work and the anti-firearms, anti-freedom people, when they want to go to one firearm a month or one firearm a year, they are neutralizing that What do you, do, law with, what, what do, you do with 47? Because Don made the point about if you're rich, you can buy anything you want. You can buy 100 guns. Yeah. You can buy 1,000 guns. Mm -hmm. and, and, if you, and why go to all the trouble with the paperwork when yeah. you get one on the street? Yes, yes, that's the other thing. Yeah. I mean, you can get, like I said, those dealers those, those making a, a weapon automatic. Like I said, they'll, they'll be on the street. So You know, that stuff has been in... It's been... For, I can remember reading the Anarchist Cookbook a mm -hmm. long, long time ago in the 60s. They had interesting articles in there on how to make an automatic, how to make a, how to make a shotgun into a, 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 la a, a launching. Yeah. You know, so that stuff is not new. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They so, got the dragon's breath in a shotgun. The deal is it's 12-gauge shotgun. You walk up to somebody, say at 15 feet, and when you fire it, the deal is they're on fire. Because yeah. when it gets out there at 15 feet, <coughs> it's, it's a flame five feet in diameter See. and you would better be dead you well, know? What, what what about licensing i mean one getting a licensing i mean my point is that do you think they do enough training when they when they go i want a gun you know okay the process is you go down with it the, the no, county or the sheriff or whatever that's where a concealed handgun concealed license weapon. yeah okay at, at the, the county okay but my point is that do, do you think they do enough training to let people know they exactly don't do any they, training they don't they, 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 they do any training when I got my first permit from Multnomah County, they said, no, we're not going to teach you how to shoot because we'd be liable if you hurt somebody. Really? Yeah, that's what they told me. <laughs> and I felt like I'd be liable if you don't train me. Yeah, right, right. And I'm a policeman, so it didn't make any difference right. to me. Mm -hmm. But that whole idea of, no, we're not going to train you because we'd be liable. I also have a, a gun permit now because I live in a different county. Mm -hmm. I live in Washington County. Mm -hmm. And because I was a policeman, I have no training. Mm -hmm. No training required. No training I don't think required. Training That's the required. county that issues. That's the county. The Multnomah county. county. Wow, wow, wow. Well, <coughs> the... Um, Should we have it? The in, the... in the places where they required training, and in fact, some places back east, they required the... the I'm thinking about Portland. I'm, I'm okay. going to okay, right? spend some time here. But you need, need a comparison, see? <laughs> okay. So they had to, the... Do they do the, the same thing? The applicant had, had to have a 80% hits. Actually um, terrified some policemen. Oh, my gosh, these people could hit 80% of the time. Policemen only required to hit 50% of the time. Is that what percentage of the people you're talking about? No, the... the 10%? 20%, 50%, 70%? Most people that get a concealed handgun license go get training. And of course the deal Most, is... What, what do you mean? What percentage? I'm, I'm asking that question. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I don't know but okay, well, they, I'm just make, make sure we, we understand what's going on. Because that's, that's one of the problems that a lot of times you, you see. A lot of folks who basically don't even know what end of the, end of the weapon they're living. They can buy it. Like you said, like Don was saying, you can buy anything you want. Well, the deal is I belong to Tri-County Gun Club and we have a limit of 6,500 members. We're at about 5,900 now. Okay, okay. And a lot of them are uh, certified trainers. And they say they're, they could be busy 24 hours a day because they're training people, you know, the legality of the law. And these actually don't have to shoot, but most of them have a shooting phase. 
which really helps the people. You know, and, and a lot of times when some people, they get the permit before they get the gun, and the deal is, it says, don't get yourself a big cannon. Tell me this, tell me this. Do you think that rich dude that bought those 47 firearms that were in Vegas trained on each one of them? No. No. Huh? But he had, had several of them were, were the AR-15 type, so... No, but, but 47. He had, he had 47 weapons. No. Yeah. Uh, they, 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 we don't, right? No. And then, and then if you will, those are, those are you can find in the black market, those folks who are buying off the back, they don't get training, right? And what, what's that percentage? So my point is that we, we, it's good that we're having the discussion. We need to have the discussion. Mm -hmm. And hopefully the NRA is kind of like at the front of this whole deal. And all they should be at the I table. Mean, I mean, sitting at the table. I don't blame the NRA. No, really? I'm not blaming them. I'm just yeah. saying we should have the discussion. <coughs> and with with uh, gotta blame the mental uh, cases. Wayne Lapierre was real quick now because I got I get, I'm getting ready to yeah. close for me. Wayne La Lapierre was on television this morning. And he says that they should uh, have the BATF do their job about the bump stock, okay. not go through the, the legislative process in the Congress. Well, I heard that BATF. But then you got the other side. The, the other side said they want to take it through Congress yeah. and just ban the whole deal. Okay. Well, John, look, you know we're going to be talking about this at a later date. So get the NRA and get Jeannie Burry. And we're going to sit down and talk about this for Oregon, okay? Oregon is very, very important. We talk about that. Okay, we're going to take a short break, and then we're going to come back with our second, second half, okay? Much. It must be college week. <clears throat> I'm sounding much better tonight, don't you think? Uh, welcome to our show and welcome to our three players uh, who are ready to go. Hi, Stacy. Uh, Stacy Davidoff, right? Yes. From Houston. Tell us where you're going to school, what you're studying, and why you're out of breath. Okay, I'm at the <laughs> University of Houston. Yeah. I'm a sophomore. Um, I work part time at a dermatologist's office. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so excited to be I here. I am too. It's nice to have you here. Lots of luck Thanks. to you. This is Jeffrey Burton from Calabasas, California, but going to school up here. Is that right? Yeah. Where um, are you going? I'm going to DVC up here, Diablo That's Valley College. Diablo Valley College. Yeah. Uh, you have friends? I'm, what are you studying? How far along are you? I'm a sophomore, and I'm studying business. I'm hoping to transfer to Berkeley Okay. In the next fall. Hope that all works out for you. Thanks. Hi, Danielle. Uh, Danielle Bowman is from Oakland, right? Yes. And let's hear about you and what you do, where you're going to school, and what you study. I'm a junior at the University of San Francisco. I am a sociology major, a psychology minor, and I hope to go into law enforcement. Sounds terrific. Nice to have you all here. Let's get going. As they said right here in the Portland Tribune, interview with the outlaw, the outlaw. She was Wheel of Fortune. Boy, how about that piece? Mm. Wheel of Fortune. She won enough money to come to Portland. Would you think so? Did you hear that, Fred? No. How did that go? Didn't hear that at all. You didn't? No. Okay. Maybe it's the wrong one. Yeah. Okay, fine. 
But anyway, but, um, but the bottom line is that, uh, well, we got a new chief of police. Yeah. And a lot of things being, I mean, she's, she's giving all sorts of interviews. You know, we're going to wait for the crowd to, to, to get down, et cetera. Then we're going to bring her on the show. And, and I hope she down. comes on the show. I'd love to talk to yeah, her. Yeah, for sure. She's going to be, you guys going to be right there with us. Yeah. We're going to be talking to her. But I think it's, it's going to be an interesting deal. We got a new Portland police chief. Her name is Danielle Outlaw. That's a heck of a name, Outlaw. Interesting. And then look at the Tribune. Look how they played it. Interview with the outlaw. Yeah. I wonder what they get it. Would would, would, the, would, would they would they say that's, that's some sign of harassment? I don't know. Like that? It's a, a play on words. Is it a play on words? Yeah. So there's no harassment or something like that, would you? The Washington County Sheriff's name is Pat Garrett. Pat Garrett. Pat Garrett, really? Pat Garrett. Oh wow, wow! I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. and, we got, and we got an Earp planted in this town. Is yeah. that right? Yeah, one of the Earp brothers yeah. is buried in this Earp? town. Earp. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Well, hey guys, Ted Wheeler has selected Danielle Outlaw, new police chief. African American one, actually, she's a black African American, right? Because you know, as you know, African African Americans now are also white. I mean, especially after the apartheid, you know, we got that out of the way. So we, so we got all these cultures, so we've added another culture, right? Yeah, Is that okay. fair? But I mean, some of the little quickie, interesting background that I heard, and I'm just going to get right to you guys, is that one, she's an AKA, a sorority, and a very solid group of women, if you will. And it just so happened, my sister in law is, is an AKA member, and boy, she is a, mm, and okay. she's tough. She is tough. And uh, I thought that was interesting in terms of. Uh, is that a college sorority? Oh, yeah, big time big time. And then the other thing is that, uh, hey, one of our major uh, celebrity here in the state of Oregon, I eat trailblazer, right? Let it basically uh, from the same area. He, he tweeted her and the whole nine yards supports it, the whole nine yards. Kind of interesting. And the other thing I'll throw out in terms of what I've read to the date, I mean, there's other things I want to do, because you guys are the expert when we talk about the, about the chief. And that is that uh, uh, she's going to be moving in the, moving in the community. She's going to be moving in the city of Portland. That's probably the first time a chief has just come out just straight up. You know, even Daryl Turner hasn't done yet. He doesn't, live, he doesn't live in the city of Portland. Oh. No, he's outside the city. I can't but fall I, but, I, no, but, but I'm just making, but my point is that she's doing this right off the bat. And mm -hmm. I thought that was kind of interesting. When you start thinking about community policing, I just kind of threw out a few things about community policing. Because the moment you start is, talking about gang members, it is automatically it's black. It is easier and safer for a police chief to move into a city than a rank and file cop. Now, I hope more cops move in this town. But I remember what cops that lived in Portland went through, especially the ones that lived in inner northeast Portland or mm -hmm. had family in inner northeast Portland. Mm -hmm. And I don't blame cops for choosing to live outside of Portland because uh, I don't know if things have changed and maybe things have. But um, we've got a, very, a lot of very bad people in this town that our cops deal with. And the last thing a cop needs uh, for these people that they have to deal with for us is to know where their family is or know where their kids go to school. True. And uh, we had a problem in the <coughs> 90s with uh, gangbangers and other criminals, mm -hmm. you understand, targeting Portland police officers and their families. Okay. And um, I don't think our state did enough to protect um, our law enforcement. Um, it's something that's a very sore spot with me because I feel if you are a criminal and you threaten a cop or his family, there is no reason for you to ever walk free again. What about elected free officials? Again. Would, you, would you put them in the same way? Well, same thing. And the thing is, our elected officials aren't attacked as often or under threat well, as Ted often. Ted Wheeler was attacked. Oh, he wasn't attacked. He had people yeah. harassing him at his home as far as well, for protesting. Well, that's attack. But no, no, no. We had people tell, uh, walk up to Portland police officers' wives and girlfriends and let them know. In that the they specifics? Could, in that the specifics? they could die or be raped at any moment. And stuff. Really? They we said that. We said yeah. it. Said it to them. You know let's, let's get down in there. Yeah, the other the other point is it's as far as I'm concerned, it's a huge red herring where she lives. Yeah. Because the city of Portland goes out to 162nd. Okay. Which uh, is some, way out. Sometimes out. as far as 172nd. Depends on where you're at. Okay. Okay, but I lived on the edge, so 162nd, yeah. clear out to West Slope on the other side. So I mean, there's a huge geographical area because she okay. lives in and being in the city. So okay. so what? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that. It, it is not a. It's not a point as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Plus, I agree with him. Plus, as a police chief, yeah. if you are a criminal yeah. and you threaten a police chief, 
or their family. Oh my God! Now you're getting into federal stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're. I mean, you would have to be a criminal with an IQ below fifty. I threw that out from the standpoint of kind of community policing. I threw that out because that's all. That word has always been thrown on the table about community policing. Here you've got a black African American woman, if you will, and in all due respect, the whole issue of of community policing. When you say it right off the bat, it's to counter the black issue thing. You say black, okay? So I'm just saying, uh, I'm throwing that word community policing, and I wanted to say, okay, what does that mean? Exactly. That's well, another, that's that's another, another deal. Another thing that but I threw it out there, so we got to talk about it. There you go. There you go. Community policing is never going to happen unless you have a lot of policemen. Okay. Okay. If you want community policing, you got to hire another thousand policemen. Then they got some policemen in the community. Right now, they're so strapped, they think, because they're not organized properly, they can only have one man cars. Mm hmm. And there's no way they can have community policing with one man car. Okay. You got to hire a bunch of policemen. You want to see them out there. So hire another pl- a thousand policemen or stop talking about community policing. Mm-hmm. Back in the day, uh, there was a traffic cop named Bob Swiller. He worked District 360, Central East Side. He was famous for throwing to- Tootsie Rolls at the guys, giving them Tootsie Rolls. He'd give them a traffic ticket and a Tootsie Roll. That was community policing. Mm-hmm. He's well known for that today. Hmm. If you go on Dead Memories Portland, there's a lot of people who remember Bob Swiller and the Tootsie, Tootsie Roll Raft. Tootsie Tootsie Roll. Oh, wow. That was community policing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that city was a lot smaller. Mm-hmm. The districts were smaller. There were less policemen. There were less people. Community yeah, policing a lot of people is fire, hire some more cops or stop talking about right, it. Okay. A lot of people. Okay. Don't take that in consideration for a couple of reasons. Mm-hmm. One, they may not have been here. Okay. 1984-85, basically, the city of Portland increased its pop. Yeah. It's just its uh, geographic footprint, 35, 40 percent. And uh, so, you know, at one time, if you go back far enough, you know, when I was born in '64, it stopped for the most part at 82nd. Yeah. You know, and you know, it, we had a, back then, in let's say 1970, when we were going up to about 82nd, yeah. we had about 700, 800 cops, which is about what we've got today, and and we stopped at about 82nd. Mm-hmm. So look at the saturation for law enforcement we had back then, uh, compared to the saturation of today. Um, and uh, so he's right. I don't know if we need a thousand more, but we certainly need four or five hundred more if we're actually going to have effective community policing. But <coughs> one thing I want to get across about her, and I, and I hope everybody listens to me on this, this is a very, very bold move that's been done before. We've had three other police officers that uh, were became, that became police chiefs that were from outside of the Portland Police or Portland, Oregon community. Okay. 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 The other three times that happened, it failed miserably. And the la- last time it happened was with Kroger. With Kroger? With who's Kroger. That, who's the other guy? Um, Kroger and... Uh, I keep screwing up all their names. We yeah, had yeah, one right, in the right, 30s, right, right. one in the 50s. Um, the one in the 50s, uh, J.D. and I were talking about him the last time we were on the show. And I was trying to remember his okay, name. Okay, let's go to another spot. But what I'm getting to is, Where every time what I do remember about them, and I'm going to find out their names and post them on my Facebook, okay. um, the, the histories of them are horrible. Um, how they ended it um, it was basically a train wreck every time and uh, and just from where I can look at from the history that I've studied the problem that a lot of those cops had and, and times were different is those ch- police chiefs weren't get a, given adequate support <clears throat> they were it was a very political upheaval you know Baker was one that's right Baker, Baker, yeah. Baker. Uh, was brought in um, yeah, Baker Neil Cooper. Goldschmidt brought yeah, him in Baker and Cooper. There was always a lot of political upheaval, both in the community and in the police department. And the chiefs, in my opinion, weren't really supported. And I'm hoping people do a little bit different with her and give her a chance. This is very difficult what she's doing. There is no way. I'm sure this woman is a very smart woman. But she has no idea how difficult this is going to be. She don't. And, and the thing is, nobody could. And uh, I think to be fair to her and to fair to the city... We got to give her a good shot, you know, up front. We really have to give her an but opportunity. But it's the mayor's choice. Now you, have, you, haven't, said, you haven't said anything about Ted. Well, Miller. no, it's the mayor's choice. He, he and that's, the one made that and choice. that's the other thing I had to bring in. The other, the other police chiefs that came in, did not have as much support from the mayor's office as they needed. Um, Kroger had a little bit more than 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 than, than, than uh, guys in this position in the past. You know, but Katz could have been a, a little bit more stronger, especially as stronger personality. Yeah, Vera Katz. So it's going to be very important. She's going to need 
um, her mayor, our, our mayor, right. and uh, she's going to need the city council um, to be in very close communication with her and give her a lot of support. Why do you, th why do you think he? Why do you think uh, Wheeler selected her, an outsider and a woman at the same time? I don't know why he picked her, but I think the reason why he went outsider is there has been a pressure. There's always a pressure when there's great upheaval in the Portland police or the relationship between the police and the community to get new leadership, to get new blood. This all it all it comes up all, every time, every 10, 15 years in Portland when it comes to um, the Portland police. In my opinion, I just think he's he's saying, hey, why not? You know, why not give it a shot? He looked at everybody in the Portland police that's there right now, and he personally, as mayor, didn't feel comfortable with okay, handing it over. Let's get Don in. Don, what do you think? Why, why, did, why did Wheeler make that selection? I think the mayor Wheeler pandered to the people. He thought if he hired a woman, a black, and somebody from outside, okay. that the citizens would shut up. Then he could go on to the homeless problem or something else. But he, far as he, I think he tried to do the right thing, but it's not going to work out for well, him. Well, she's she's highly qualified. I mean, yeah, I well. there were other black candidates. There was other good white candidates. Well, um, Charles Moose, as my understanding, he applied for the job. Oh my too. God, that would have been a joke. That would have been a joke. <laughs> Charles Moose is still, in my opinion, one of the worst police chiefs we've had in my lifetime. I don't even want that guy in the state of Oregon. I hope he hope he's not here now. Okay, well, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Last thing we need is Chief Moose back. Okay, that was okay. horrible for the community. Well, now, okay, now we've got we've got an African American, black, black African American. I got to get used to that deal because people don't, don't say that enough, if you will, so we can get over this racism thing. Because as you know, we've been doing this, mm -hmm. this racism, hate, this hate and racism piece. So the bottom line is that we've got a black African American woman police chief. We've got a black African American. A union person mm -hmm. and Daryl Daryl Turner. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, it, it has been said that basically the the cops run the city. I mean that's that's Daryl's piece. Okay, and then you've got the chief, right? And then you've got Ted Wheeler. So you got three major points right there. No, no, no. The the head guy, if you will, the the CEO, uh, is the mayor. He's the one that selected his chief. Mm -hmm. And and then no, normally. The, the chain of command, as we know from a military standpoint, i.e. the chief of police is, in all due respect, is Daryl's boss. Yeah, well. And is Daryl, is Daryl, and now is Daryl a, 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 a police person? Is he not a police person? He happens to be the, uh, the agent, the, was it president of the union, but he's still on the payroll as a Portland policeman. Am I right? That's Talk my understanding, that. yeah. Talk about do, that. They shouldn't do that. They shouldn't do that? No, because he's taking the policeman's job and the policeman's pay. Okay. Let him be his union man, give that spot to a policeman, another policeman, and then when he wants to, when he's done with the union and wants to come back, he should be able to come back with no, with no, uh, his it, no prejudice. His tenure and stuff like with that. With no yeah. prejudice. Okay. And, and get his job back. Is that what they used to do in the past? I don't know, but double dipping is nonsense. You can't be a policeman because you're taking up a spot. Don't take up a spot and not do the job. Because you're, you're a union man, so do the union and then come back and be a policeman. I don't like the double pay. It's not a good idea. I wouldn't allow it. If I was if I was the chief of police, he'd be back in uniform somewhere. Well, I just it, transferred well, him. Well, most of the staffers there are policemen, aren't they not? Yeah. Right? Yes. They're supposed to, right? See, I don't know if you could legally prevent him from working. Um, if he's a union rep, I don't think you can hold that against him uh, as far well, as do employment. Do we know that one way or the other? Employment. I don't mind. If you, I don't know if he's if double dipping at all. But you're not going to pay him. I don't want that money. I don't want that money to go somebody who's not doing a job. Like I said, I mean, it sounds like a good idea. I'm not disagreeing well, with you. Idea. I'm just saying I don't know if it's legal. But okay. that's something for somebody. Well, we started off from the standpoint that yeah. the chief of police happens to be Miss Outlaw. She right. needs to. She Run has. A, she has a lot of things to solve that she doesn't mm -hmm. know about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She needs to reorganize the police department. She needs to stop the one-man cars, which is why cops get hurt all the time. Mm -hmm. She needs to do something about that. The specialization is what has destroyed the police department, as far as I'm concerned. There's too many specialists and not enough generalists. You're a cop. You got too many traffic guys. You got too many internal affairs. You got too many investigators that are not policemen. Put mm. them on the street, put them back street. on the street where they belong. Two-man cars, it's the only way to go. If you, if you go back and look, and I'm working on an essay for this right now, policemen and the citizens get into trouble because one policeman stops one car. That's how they get into trouble. Mm. Two policemen never have that trouble. Ah. 
Let me, just let me share this. Well, we're sharing it with her. You know, have just sleep. let me share it. That's all I did. I walked the street for six years. I had two really good pen, men partners. And in that time on the street, I can't remember any time where the two of us couldn't handle something. Mm -hmm. One person, that's a different story because it's a different dynamic. If I'm coming after you and it's just me and you, mm -hmm. you're going to look at me different. Mm -hmm. If I'm coming after you and he's with me, you're looking at the whole, right, it's a whole right. different dynamic. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. So, so the, the officer stopping the car, that's his job. The other officer is the surveillance. He's looking inside the car, mm -hmm. make sure everything mm -hmm. is safe. Mm -hmm. Two man cars are the okay. answer. Okay. Two man okay. cars are the two answer. Two man cars And if she doesn't figure that out and go back to two man cars and get rid of the traffic division as it stands, then she's wasting her time. The other thing she needs to do immediately is go back to blue uniforms. That would make national news. Go back to the blue uniforms. Why is that, John? Because there aren't any more blue people. They're all wearing black. Mm. They're all intimidating. Mm. So the blue, the thin blue line went away a long time ago. It's all wow. black now. Wow. Wow. Everybody wears black uniforms because they're more intimidating. You don't want to be intimidating. You want to be... You want to be a policeman. Well, you remind me about the about the city of roses, and I used to have yeah, the what roses happened to that? On, on the cars. Yeah. What happened to that? Yeah. Piece? What happened to that? You know? Why did they change? You got, you got any, any any history on that? I thought place? it was still on there. Uh, no, it's not on there anymore. Uh -uh. No, that's not on there anymore. Call nine one one if you want help or something like that. Protect yeah, and right. serve integrity. Well, I can't help but think, and I'm hoping. I'm, I don't know for a fact that that uh, the mayor and her have got a plan of what of changes. There's there's got to be things that the, the mayor himself wants to see changed. And, and done, and he's looking for somebody who's going to help him do it, that he thinks is going to be most effective at doing it. I mean, I, it's nothing that Donna said I disagree with, but what, what I'm saying is, in the initial, let's say, six months here for sure, if not the first year, uh, we got to give her and the, and the mayor a shot at making changes before yeah. we get too too critical, because this, this Portland police community is a long, deep, community. We got guys on the Portland Police that are the great grandchildren of, of cops um, that served, you know, 50, oh, 60 yeah, years ago. Yeah. And uh, this is a community. It's a, it's a very tight-knit, close community. They look out for themselves as they should, you know. Um, I'm not holding that against cops and stuff like that at all. But there is a, um, a, a lot of political stuff that well, it's just like anybody, friends, anybody out there at your job, whatever job you've got, especially if you're the second or third generation in that job, sure. there are certain political things that, and personalities and agreements and rules that aren't written in stone. There's a, there's a certain way everybody reacts yeah. to things in your community of your, of your employment. Well, we got that with the Portland police. And uh, some of them have got to change. If, any, if there's anything the mayor and her feels needs to be changed, I feel we need to give them a shot. You know, and, and making it work because people want to see change with the Portland Police. Well, now wait a minute. Now, let's talk about the selection process. Now, remember, now Wheeler supposedly picked up the the community, and they had this discussion, and they picked her. Remember mm -hmm. now, well, Wheeler picked her. It wasn't open I mean, because we didn't know who all was involved in it. Well, they posted in Oregonian. I mean, I saw the well, list. Sure, it was it was actually. I mean, That's it could have been better. No, there were a couple of people but, on there I would have never let on that Fred, community in a million Fred, years. You, but read, a, you read the Argonian. What he's saying, we, a lot but, of the folks didn't read the Argonian. Well, yeah, I mean, I... It wasn't as open as I would like to have right. been. You, I would have liked them. You, you know what the committee was when, 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 when Goldschmidt picked his, uh, his no. baker? No. Him, his chief of staff, and one other person. Yeah. I mean, it was like that... They went and picked out who they wanted. Yeah, but that was his choice. I mean, what, what, yeah. what Don is saying, you know, but the idea is that he, the way he had set this thing up and the way it was being laid out in terms of the media and this, that, and the other was that he got community involved yeah. in this whole piece. I mean, I think he got enough community involved. That was a that committee was better <coughs> than average. It was better than the ones that Vera Cassett put together in the past. Well, who were some of the people? Just, just for, I don't know who they no, were. I'm, just, I'm besides, asking you. you besides you, Moose? Um, yeah. You, who, who, was on, who were some of the people? Well, Moose wasn't on that committee. No, but I mean, who, who oh, were the candidates? I mean, Rich, oh, Robert. Uh, I mean, uh, Marshman. Marsh, no, Marshman. Marshman was on it, but what's his name? Robert Brown. Robert Brown was on it. Daryl Turner was, Darryl, Darryl Darryl Turner was, was on it. Yeah. Oh, okay. um, gosh, what's her name was on it? Um, 
I can't remember her name. Just that quick. I think, I see I her think, face. I think uh, the pastor of uh, yeah, the Vancouver Avenue. Pastor of uh, Matt yeah. Hennessy was Matt on Hennessy it. Matt Hennessy was on it. Okay, um, who else? Um, was any media person on it? Not that I remember. Any, like Oregonian? Not that I remember. I mean, I think that would If there was an Oregonian or a Lemon person down there, there would be no black people. Trust me. Lemon Week and Oregonian is <laughs> never going how'd get to... How do we get on that? Is man? never going to support anybody black doing <laughs> come on, anything. Come on, Fred. I mean, Give I me a break. Uh, come on now. I mean, come on now. Uh, that's, that was like four marks against them. You know, is Lemon Week person looks down and goes, oh my God, there's a Negro there? No way. Well, <laughs> well the Tribune did a heck of a deal there. You know what I'm saying? Well, Tribune did, you know, reached out to a, a couple of black people to come work for them. Uh, you know, one of them is Promise King. Which is, I think I hope they. I hope he ends up working with them. Uh, the, the Tribune is uh, is actually trying to get some some local color involved in their organization. <laughs> you know what I mean? But you know, well, where do we stand? They'll, now, they'll never happen you, in Oregonian you, that, or that's been week. Charge, Fred, that's been your charge for quite some time. What? So where do we stand in Portland as far as as far as black people are concerned? <laughs> Well, black people are, right now, there's a fewest of us percentage wise has been in probably since the 1920s. What does it look like percentage wise? Oh, uh, gosh, we're down to 3% or something. 3%. Like, uh, something 3%. like that. Something like how that. Many, not a lot. How many? Is there 25,000? It's something like 30. What they're 30, expecting in the next census is going to be real close to 30. Okay. 30, really, really close to 30. 30,000. And put it like this we had more black people um, in Portland any time before now, up to like about 1935. We have to go back and back and back yeah. to find a time. And um, so, yeah, no, a lot of black people don't live in Portland anymore. But the ones that do, um, it, it, the trend is the ones that do um, are, let's say, comparably wealthy black okay, people okay. when you look at the national average. So how are we doing? I mean, that's why I asked you the question. Right black now. people in how general are we doing in Portland? today as far as, uh, as, as far as Portland is concerned? You know, it's in supposed the to be the whitest city. I in mean, the Portland are market, we, are we improving very the, exciting. There's a lot of things going on in the black community. Okay. Most white people don't know about it because white media is not going to is not going to talk about mm, it. Really? Um, I mean, they're beginning to talk about it a tiny bit, but really, they're not. They don't have the relationships with enough people or, uh, in the black community to understand who, you know, wh really what's going on, the arc of what's going on. But there's a lot of great things going on. Well, one of and the, one of them you should get a show, you do a cold. show on is that pitch black thing that Stephen Green's got going on. Pitch black? Pitch black where a bunch of black entrepreneurs get together and oh, really? they, they pitch, you know, their business or their or their product ideas. Oh, really? Okay. It's called Pitch Black. Pitch Black. You need to do a show okay. just on who's, that who's, alone. Who's, who's leading that charge? Stephen Green. Uh, Stephen Green. Uh, Stephen Green's one well, of the leaders. Well, you contact him. You can interview him. Yeah, that that <laughs> thing. I mean, gosh, I wish there's so many people, black and white, that have passed in Portland that worked so hard to to you know to make things better for you know for, for minorities and this stuff <clears throat> that have passed. I wish they could see that thing. Well, the thing that got me about what you just got through saying about you know the the, the, the major medias don't uh, don't actually project the, some of the things that, that blacks are doing here. And uh, I noticed nothing's going to change Observer, until they drop. Down. I noticed that in the Portland Observer, this is a black newspaper, uh -huh. uh, front page that last issue, they had uh, one of Cole's son, one of Cole's son, Cole, Cole, Cole Construction, Cole yeah. is it Cole Construction? I mean, he's got three, three, three or four major projects on mm -hmm. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, mm -hmm. and his son just picked up a contract. He beat out Walsh and Hoffman mm -hmm. for the remodeling of, of uh, was it Metro? Mm -hmm. or Metro? Yeah, something yeah. like yep. thirty some odd million bucks yeah. or something like that. Yep. And it's one of his son. Yep. Okay. And he's not been in here that long, if you will. You got my yep. point? But that that's now you know, major. Now you know what, how important that is. I remember because I'm a, I'm a Metro Future Vision Commissioner. Right. Right. right? So back in the early 90s, when Metro moved to that location, took over the old Sears building, right. they put out a bid, and uh, they were looking for black contractors right. to possibly bid. This is like 91. Well, I remember that. that. I remember that. There were no black contractors in the state of Oregon that could possibly qualify to bid for it. And that was the first time it ever you know, came across yeah. to me just how far. So now this is where we're at. You know, the son of a guy who founded, which is now the most successful minority contracting <laughs> company ever, right? But his son now is just won a contract for Metro. That's awesome. That is awesome. That is awesome. That shows yeah. a lot of change. Oregon ain't going to care about that. Yeah. Neither is Lima Week. That's, that's way good history. <laughs> that's good stuff to share with people and let yeah. people know, yeah. um, one, how we're progressing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the let, uh, let black people know how we're progressing, but not just that. White people know how we're yeah, progressing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when I'm a week, Oregonian, those little white guys, 
They'll never, well, the good, the, they'll well, never talk about One of the good stuff. things about it is that there has been a lack of, of communication along that line. Yeah. A lot of times, you, I mean, in all due respect, they expect the IE, the observer, and the scanner newspaper to, to do share, that. to do yeah. that. Yeah, they and a lot of times they try to mix apples with oranges routine. See, you're being As nice. Of, uh, they don't yeah. read those papers. <laughs> they don't care what the, or, what the observer or scanner write. They, they, what they want to do is hide behind it. When guys like me and other people called them and their family members out, because some of their family members are being called out about how racist they are. Who is this now? Um, Oregonian Wyoming well, Week. I mean, there are more and more people well, do you think who are just fed the, up with these people. Do you think people. the observer and the scanner are doing a good job? They're doing the best they can for you know a, an African American paper in the, in 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 this town, um, you know. There's, very good they're, I mean, they're doing very good considering how tough it is to make a buck in the journalism okay. community in the first place. Okay. And I commend both of them for for not you know um, you know for working hard and being able to keep their papers afloat. It's not very easy. But and, the, uh, the point I'm going to make in regards that we can mm -hmm. ready to come up with another election, mm -hmm. and you and I have both been there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't think they do enough about at least highlighting those blacks who are, who are running for office in terms of giving background and talk about some of the issues that are relevant to the black community, if you will, their contribution, things like that. I think that's very, very important. Well, I think the last cycle, uh, Scanner, who, I will, you know, full disclosure, they did endorse me, but um, I think the Scanner's getting better at that. I've noticed the last one or two. Um, I don't think so. But, but, the, or, but the Observer definitely is not getting no, better. I don't, I don't think so. You don't think so? I have well, never. Well, you're, you're the one with the history in journalism, I've never not me. been highlighted running for office in the scan of the Observer newspaper. You know that? Well, that's too bad. No, yeah, it's not too bad. I'm just, no, I'm just saying. No, they it's, shouldn't. It's, it's really a sad note. They should. In all due respect, we need to know what the issues are. And you know, the Oregonian right. and Willamette well, Week should do that. No, they. they as well. Respect, I will say that. I mean, they, they, that. They, they, they basically did. They did at least they profiled me. Yeah, they did, they did interview him, things of that nature. But my point is that I think see, it's very important. See, I've never been interviewed by the Oregonian. Yeah, in all my years running for office, all the times I've run for office, Oregonian has not one time interviewed me. Mm. Yeah. And I'm going to, I'm not going to the board, if you will. But the bottom line is that uh, I have been interviewed. You know what I mean? It's kind of interesting. Yeah, I mean, why was I interviewed there, but I wasn't interviewed over here? See what I'm saying? And then I always pretty well, I've got to deal with this issue of race. When I'm running for office, yeah. as opposed to looking at the issues that I bring to the table, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think yeah. the observer and the scan are both. And just like the other the Asian report is another one who basically will say, "Well, we don't deal in politics, so therefore we will not interview you or talk to you about your." I mean, I didn't even know the Asian report is still open. No, no, he's still here. But hold, going back to the police uh, and oh, you, uh, police chief, I hope the Oregonian and Willamette Week and the uh, all this again. I, I hope all the journalism community give this one minute a shot before they start tearing her apart you know what i mean uh, these white people that run these newspapers you know they love tearing apart black people because it's safe yeah. they dream it's safe up yeah. until now you know usually when they tear down a black person they just figure hey what's that black person going to do this not like they're going to sue yeah. me yeah. you know what I'm talking about i mean this is the first time in there in, in portland history probably since the 50s, since, since the 56 election, where journalists have to worry about, you know, gosh, if I'm too unfair or something, you know, because with technology and stuff like that, you know, people can take, they can take it out on people I care about. Yeah. You know, back in the 50s, you know, that was the last time I think well, this, an organist This is, this is the new media about. right here. Mm -hmm. This is the news. Social media is it, and whether you yep. can afford it or not, that's another issue. Correct. You got me. And it, and actually, are the entire population. You know, in front mm -hmm. of the city of Portland, do they have one of these? And mm -hmm. the seniors don't have it. It's a lot of times, you, you know, you know most how to operate. Most people do. You know, a lot of times they don't know how to operate. Most people do. Most well, people well, have it. Well, most of it. I'm just, I'm just mm -hmm. saying, though, that the, but this is the new media. That's but, you know, I don't, like I said, I want to bring this up because I want my friends out there to think about this. I think one of the reasons why we've got the state of affairs in politics and in, um, in law enforcement even is because of the low lives we got inside our journalism community who keep focusing on negative issues that aren't necessarily relevant yeah. to what's really going on I especially with, with with uh with law enforcement you know i'm talking about we are a growing city we're one of the fastest growing population wise markets in the united states and that brings a lot of social and cultural issues and stuff like that and um they're not really reporting on that on the complexities the things we should should notice about or the successes and stuff but they will report about a negative thing in a heartbeat you understand and they're they're really not they've really not been very good for the people of Portland. I mean, you know, it's like I was telling some people the other day. I said if the Oregonian and Willamette Week didn't say nothing about this woman for three months, didn't say a word, mm -hmm. you know, that would be better 
then if you look at their track record in the past, how they deal with law enforcement, especially when there's a new turnover with, you know, with police chiefs and stuff. You know, I hope they give her a shot to put together some of these changes that Ted Wheeler and her want to see made in the city. Yeah, but the point you make in regards to the, the, this promo piece, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, I'd really like to get to it, Dave, because a lot of times, a lot of folks today are, are, are in fear. They're, they're fearful. As far as as far as as far as their safety and and their their home and things of that nature, I'd like to get it back down to the point where it's a law enforcement that we created, law enforcement officers, where they basically know what the issues are. They got policies to live by, and they just basically they are enforcing the law, not making it a special entity like they're totally outside of whatever. That's that's something that that that, that bothers a lot of folks. Mm -hmm. So if we can get to that point, city of roses, if you will, uh, uh, in blue, you know, now they're they're reaching out. You know what well, I mean? They can do it. You know well, what I'm saying? That's, well, that's I, I agree with you, and that may be what she and the mayor is trying to yeah, do. Yeah, for all they, we know. Yes. But you know, what's not <laughs> going to tell it? But, but, but tell people, educate well, people. Well, yeah, but you know, the thing is, we got to trust these these criminals called journalists to, to tell the truth. Well, you I mean, they call them criminals. Why do you want to call them criminals? Because give, give them a break. They lie through their teeth. They lie often. through their teeth. Okay. What I'm saying is. You know, I would rather them say nothing. You know, if they can't be truthful okay, and fair okay. to this woman and the mayor, That's why I'm as the they point. are trying to make these changes, That's, that's you understand? Okay. I would rather them say nothing. I got you. And honestly, friends, if we catch them lying to us again, they ride bikes, they go to the same bars and restaurants we do. You know, this is Portland, Oregon. We used to Shanghai people that used to offend <laughs> us. You know what I'm talking about? I mean. I would rather them just leave her and the mayor alone for a little while. Give them some time to make some, because some of these things are going to be pretty, um, I mean, you, they're going to, you're going to break some eggs. You're going to hurt some feelings. Mm -hmm. You understand? You're oh, going to, yeah. oh, yeah. and, and, oh, yeah. and, and, and that's in any change. Anybody who's worked in, in, in any working environment with professionals to make change, there's dramas and stuff. And not all those dramas are worth talking about. Okay, okay, you understand? Okay. And I, got and I think, I think they need to leave her alone okay. for a little while. Now, we've got about five minutes or so. Let's bring you back on the board here. I mean, the thing about it is this. You're thinking about running for office. You're still yeah, thinking, thinking about it hard. For, for the city Very hard. For city council. For one, city council. For one of those. But my point is that you were really thinking about it. Bruce, what, what, there's, what, there's what only you, two wait, jobs wait, 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 wait a minute. What, are the, what do you think are some of the major issues that are facing the city of Portland that a person should vote for? Homeless, you? planning for future growth, the inclusion of people that are the, the part of the lower 30% of the economic population. Mm -hmm. You know, right now I feel the city of Portland is, 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 is focused on people who haven't moved here yet. And we're only focused on people who make good money. Okay. And um, we're not very uh, accommodating to people in fixed incomes. Mm -hmm. um, we're more accommodating to people who are, um, you know, sleeping in tents than we are to somebody who's lived here all their life and on a fixed income. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, yeah, I mean, if you've lived here all your life, pay taxes all your life, and you're, you're 50s, 60s, 70s, retiring, and on fixed incomes, the city, this is not a city that's worried about you. Mm -hmm. If you are a, a criminal from Boise, Idaho, and you <clears throat> want to want to hide out and live in one of our parks or something like yeah, that, yeah. hey, there's a lot of compassion for you because you're living on the street in a tent. You, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I want to change the so focus. How do, you, so how do you deal with that? How the do we deal with that? homeless piece. I mean, that's a, that's a big piece. Let's take that one piece. What do you think is a solution to that homeless piece? I know, I'm talking Start to you. enforcing the law. What, what do you mean? You start, what do you mean? You, you start you, you, enforcing the law and you start bringing in, in resources if, in, in an efficient way. I just posted on my Facebook the other day, I would make it illegal to, to camp anywhere but the Memorial Coliseum. I would turn the Memorial Coliseum into a building for, for the poor. And I put all the resources where everybody, if you're having a hard time paying your rent, having a hard time being, you know, uh, having a place to stay, having a hard time finding resources for medical and stuff, you know, you go to the Memorial Coliseum and the county and the state and the city is going to be there. You need to camp. They got a big parking lot there. There's other things that we can do during so the winter time. You're going to vet these people there, right? They're yeah, we're going to vet them. And then the people who are criminals, <clears throat> they're not going to go down there because we're going to arrest the criminals. You know, one of the things that I remember when I kept hearing when I was running for office last year, the, the Portland police and every woman I talked to that was involved with the homeless issue is 100% of the women and children um, that are homeless um, are molested or raped, sexually abused, 100%. And the reason why, we got a lot of criminals. 
They don't worry. They they're not worried about the Portland police or anybody. What's, your, what, what's your definition in. of a criminal? I mean, you, you really you, a criminal? Well, the the what criminal the criminal element with inside the uh, the homeless population. They they uh, a lot of times they are uh, addicted to drugs, but not all the time. But we got a high percentage of guys who are from other markets who are sex offenders who can't find a job or a place to live in another market, so they come here. We've got a lot of people who are just criminals. Uh, they choose to be criminals. And it's, it's a great uh, uh, cover to be uh, homeless or whatever you want to call it, part of the homeless population to be a criminal. Not all of our, our, our homeless people are like that. But I want our city to be looking for the people who need our help, right? And I don't want to waste our money on criminals. Okay, on that, that particular note, that population. I'm going to bring I'm going to bring another voter. Said he he may be outside, but the bottom line, Don has been around for quite. He's got quite a bit of knowledge. Yeah, he's dealt with. Well, what do you, what did you, you deal with homeless what, people no, no, here? You just hold off for a minute. Well, what, Don, what do you think about some of the things he said? You think Don could? Be, I mean, I'm sorry. Could, I'm sorry. That Fred, <coughs> that Fred could be a, 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 a. Is he dealing with some of the issues you think? Well, uh, um, major. Aside from my essay, which I wrote and put on the post. Uh, some problems are not solvable. I don't think that's one of them. I don't think the homeless problem will ever be solved. It's just, really? Yeah, I don't think so. Oh. I don't think so. It's 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 one of the problems that we can't solve because there's too many people and it just keeps getting worse. Mm -hmm. If you're asking me what happened before, in the 60s it was against the law to beg. You got caught begging, you went to jail. But you had a place to sleep, you had food, and you uh. went on the street. So... Shit. And you, you can we go them backwards and, and you get better? But Don, we also, wait, wait, no, let, let me get through talking. Can we go backwards and get better? I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. But there weren't any people on the street begging. They were in jail. They were warm. May not be the best place for them, but they weren't on the street. They weren't. And, and being they were. vetted. And they were being vetted. They were being arrested. Yeah, right. Yeah, but Don, how many of you see a lot of the beggars, from what I've heard from people, cops and everybody, a lot of the people who are begging on the street, mm -hmm. I mean, there are some that are fakers. But a lot of them are mentally ill people. Yeah. And back back when you were a cop, they would be in a hospital or some other facility. That's true. It was called okay. damage. Okay, so today the danger of, of, of arresting those That's beggars true. is basically we're arresting people who are begging because they've got mental issues. And yeah. are we going to turn our jail into a mental hospital? Because... You understand? I mean, they're begging because no, they have no, no other right. skills to do anything else, yeah, and there's no, right. they, and they don't have access to programs. They know, uh, one way or another, they're not connecting the programs to help them be self-sufficient. That's why I would make it illegal well, yeah, to, yeah, yeah, to yeah. camp well, everywhere. And, and that's spot. why it's not solved. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's, 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 that's why, why it's not solved. That, that's, that, that's, 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 that's exactly where it's coming from. I bet, so, so I the, bet bottom line, the bottom line is, so once selected, if, if, you, if you run, and once selected, that will be something that you will be discussing. Right? Oh, yeah, big time. And focusing on that piece. My okay. plan is to solve Which position it. are you thinking about running for? Saltzman or? I haven't decided between Saltzman or Nick Fish yet. Okay. Which one do you think? Uh... I don't know enough about either one yeah. of them. I would just like to see some black leadership in the yeah. city. Yeah, we need we need some we need some leadership now. Well, we got two black respect. people running, you know, two other black people running. Mm -hmm. uh, and we got uh, Loretta Smith and we got uh, Jane. I mean, uh, jo Joanne Hardesty. Joanne, Joanne, Joanne Hardesty. Hardesty. And they're they're running they're run, running for Baldwin's yeah. uh, Salzman's seat. And we we'll probably get some others. Okay, good. Okay, well that's good. Joanne well, Hardesty's out of relief. Any lasting comments you might want to share in regards to the. That's a good comment. Yeah, we need to give her we need to give her a chance. But I but I'll tell you what, in six months I'll know if she's gonna make it or not. Six months. If you yeah. don't if you don't do what needs to be done in six months, you what are you looking for? What kind of things are you looking for? No, 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 I'm looking for no, I'm looking for no, 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 I, I right now I'm from where, where I told you I'm giving her and the mayor uh, a few months where you know they got my support I'm gonna watch what they're doing and I'm hoping that they got a plan I'm tired in this city people uh, throwing things under the bus before things even get started yeah you know it hasn't even gotten started yet and I blame a lot of it on these darn people in journalism and friends if you catch these guys in our journalism community doing that because i honestly believe they owe it to all of us call to give fred. these guys no, a no, chance no, no call no. fred no 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 don't just call me take it out on them when you see them on the streets okay. let them know you don't right. you don't like what they did gentlemen this has been great it's been fantastic we'll be doing something next week fine good thank you guys yep. all right thank you folks hope you enjoyed the show share the show with some other thank folks you. and talk about these issues thank and, you and welcome her welcome the new chief okay call the mayor let him know you're watching 
Have a good one. We're watching. Take care. Yep. We're watching.